Hi everyone! Let's see if this is updating. Aha! I think I see. Okay, I think I see myself and it must be working. Um, let me know if there are any sound issues and if you can hear me all right. But hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am back with part three of our spin along. Um, we are working on spinning some really pretty roving that I had dip dyed in Wilton's Violet while it was crocheted in a chain. And here uh, is where we ended up last time. We got most of the way through, um, but I think that we will finish the first part of the roving and that we'll start the speckled roving tonight. And so that is my plan um, for the spin along. Hi! Um, yeah, and I think I'm gonna have the camera um, a little closer uh, to the spinning wheel tonight so you won't see my feet, um, but you should get a better view of the bobbin and of the yarn that we're getting. So I think that, that will be pretty nice. All right, let's... Uh, Flip this around. Okay. You know, I was so proud of myself for getting ready on time. And then I was like, oh no, I don't have any of my tools. Um, whoops, okay, we lost, I think we're back now. Sorry guys. Um, <laughs> I may have or may not have dropped the camera and that may or may not have made this uh, fluctuate for a moment. So, <laughs> yeah, I think hopefully you'll still be able to see me drafting. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Oh my gosh, you have the Fantasia in your shopping cart now? That is amazing. Wait, now I need to remember. <laughs> Okay, I need to remember what I was doing. See, I was all prepared and then I was like, oh, I don't have my tools and I don't have my notes. All right. I double checked and I'm spinning Z singles. Um, I haven't yet checked the WPI, so I'm not sure how thin, but I think maybe it's fingering or DK. I'm definitely not at lace weight here. And um, I do have a WPI tool, so we should be able to check out uh, how thin I got my singles at the end. Oh, great. So you can see, mm -hmm. well, at least one of my hands. Uh, <laughs> last time I talked all about how I did like to do um, a short draft because I can't handle a long draft. Hi. Um... What resources did I use to learn how to spin? Um, well, I started on a drop spindle, which I find to be a bit harder than the spinning wheel to do, but it really taught me um, how to control the draft and like how much to pull without the, the fiber splitting. So that was handy. And I used a lot of YouTube videos with that. Um, the drop spindle I had came with a booklet and that was not super helpful. <laughs> um, and so I quit for like a year and then I picked it back up because I had been dyeing my own yarn and I really wanted to explore and push the color um, choices of what I was able to do. Um, but I'm not sure if you can see like how pretty these twists are. I guess it's, you're still a little far away. Let's see if I can move you. A little bit closer. Not that that would really help. Um, yeah, the drop spindle takes so much longer than a spinning wheel. Um, if you're going to order a drop spindle, I highly recommend getting a Turkish drop spindle because you can, you can as you're spinning, you can wind the yarn into a center pull ball, which will help you if you decide to ply or something at the end. Because I found when I was trying to get the yarn off the drop spindle, the twist of like untwisting it and since I didn't have like you know I was having it in boxes to try to wind it up and I was coming into a lot of problems 
So, hey, no worries. Um, oh yes, I am. Oh, I am wearing a chemistry skirt. Um, this is actually a skirt that I sewed myself. Um, when I got my sewing machine, I swore that I was not interested in making adult garments, but then I saw this fabric and knew that I needed a chemistry skirt. It even has pockets. Um, and so it, it was a very simple pattern and I think I'm going to try to make another one because it's just quilting cotton gathered with an elastic waist and is really comfy for the summer. Uh, Hey, watching spinning while crocheting is a fun place to be. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. What wonderful. So today I'm using, well, today, every day I'm using a Kromsky Fantasia spinning wheel. Um, I showed the full thing of it in part one of the spinning series. And I like that it has a very small footprint, um, but I also had found it very beginner friendly as I first tried it out at a fiber festival. And, you know, I was sat down and it was already like set up with a leader and with fiber, but I sat down and I was spinning almost immediately. Um, so I had been pretty intimidated um, before that. Can you, s I'm not sure, I'm not, so the question is if I can spin lace weight without getting another whirl. I, this is the whirl that the Kromsky Fantasia came with. Um, I think the ratios are like one to five and one to eight. Um, I'm currently spinning, I think on one to 10. So I did get, and I also have an even smaller whirl here. Um, and so I like using the faster one um, because I, I, I think it really depends. It depends on how fast you want to treadle. And I'm sure that there are people who could, if you go maybe really slow, you could get the twist you needed, but, um, I'm not very good at getting consistent lace weight. So maybe I just need to go for it with my fastest whirl and then I can get lace weight. Yeah, big and super tiny. Um, I do find that the drive band gets a bit looser, even on this medium whirl. Um, and so sometimes, and I think in the other video, I accidentally kicked it and knocked it off a few times. But I think that it was also just getting, I needed to just get myself used to using the wheel again. Yeah, but I, you know, so I guess I've been, I got this wheel for my... Okay, now I can't remember when I actually got the wheel. I definitely, maybe I got it for my 29th birthday. So I've had it, oh man, almost five years. I'll be 34 this year. Did I do the math right, guys? <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. So Rhonda said that on the playback, you couldn't get the live chat. Um, you can't see the live chat, so um, I might want to say the question um, before answering it. And yes, that is something that I definitely need to work on. Um, but yeah, the... <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit distracted. But yes, I should... Um try to do better at saying the question out loud. I wish that um, I could save the chat or figure out how to get it to pop up on the video itself so that way um, some of the questions could be highlighted better. Um, yeah, what Do I like the size of the bobbins? Um, I, I don't know if they're actually the largest for spinning wheels because this is the only wheel I've had. The size of the bobbins are pretty good. I can get like just barely sometimes at the end, but I can get a hundred grams of two ply yarn onto the bobbin um, without having to start a second one. And so that's pretty nice. I do wish that they were larger sometimes because 
one thing about like spinning your own yarn, it'd be nice if you could have it be continuous and not have to break and stop. Um, but Oh, yes, pretty please and thank you. Yes, I, I will try to say the questions. Quick and easy hack for, oh, hi Jacob. Um, no, I'm not using OBS right now. Um, the, it's a question about the, <laughs> from my brother, about the program that I'm using to film. I'm actually doing this directly from um, my phone because I found that the video and audio quality are better than when I was using my laptop. So I'm not actually using any kind of screen capture system and I'm not connected to my computer directly. I'm only using my computer to see the comments right now. Um, so that means that I can't use the laptop to overlay the comments themselves onto the video. Um, but that would, that would be pretty <laughs> handy. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah, I think that I just, Need to get better at reading them out loud, but I'm also squinting a little bit trying to see them. I need a, oh, I should have just enlarged uh, this thing on my screen so that I could read it easier. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough uh, streaming logistics. <laughs> oh, but I, yeah, back to the, to the question about if I'm happy with the bobbin size for the Kromsky. You know, I am... Almost, I'm on the last section of the fiber that I separated with this roving, and so I've almost fit all of it onto this one bobbin, and so that's pretty fun. Am I going to go for a shawl with this yarn? I'm not sure. I think it depends on what the yard, final yardage is. I've always wanted to do a shawl with my hand-dyed hand-spun yarn, but very rarely have I hit I think there was one time that I really like made a push to get 400 yards out of 100 grams and I think that I just barely hit it um, but I'm just not getting the yardage that I need for a lot of the shawl knitting patterns that I do um, and so hopefully like you know I think my next project I'm going to really push to do thinner singles because I think that I I can go thinner than I am right now I might just have to go I don't think I've used my fastest rolls yet and I think I might just have to go and try it I I'm just nervous about ending up with like a tight not soft mess yes I I'm glad that spinning yarn looks fun too um, I really enjoy doing it I find it very rhythmic and relaxing and it takes less attention um, than than knitting sometimes so I can do it while watching TV and stuff um, oh buy one pound for a shawl yeah one pound I'm more of a personally more of a fan of shawlettes than really large shawls um, but I, I talked about last time how I did in 2012 I knit 12 shawls that year um, and they were all out of fingering and lace weight yarn and oh I love doing doing lace work but that is some and and bead work um, but that's something that I have not had a lot of time to do um, yeah so but with these bobbins, as I start getting towards like the end of them, I start having a little more trouble with the um, break band and getting the tension right so that way the yarn will actually go onto the bobbin. Um, so when I ply these yarns together, I will definitely need to use, I think, two bobbins and split it in the middle. Um, but we'll see if I can like do that approximately in the middle. I have a feeling I'll end up with like a big skein and a little skein. If a guy could pull off a shawl at you would love that. Yeah. Um, I, I knit, um, there, there are some designers that some male designers that create some of the most beautiful patterns that I've ever seen. I actually made 
um, a shawlette mm -hmm. kind of as a scarf um, for my husband one year. You know, I found one that, uh, it wasn't, I don't think it was lace though. I think that it was a um, color work garter stitch shawl. Ah, so Rhonda wanted to know why is it harder, um, the uptake harder as the bobbin gets fuller? And that is a very good question that I do not have a complete answer to. Um, I think that it has to do with, well, probably something with the, the physics of it and the, um, I, I don't think I can really just, I don't think I really understand myself how the brake band works and how like it, I mean, I know it causes friction. So that way when there's less tension, the bobbin stops spinning. And so as this is going around, it allows the yarn to go on it. And so maybe it's, it's probably something about the, um, radius of the bobbin and I mean I, <laughs> I'm making things up I'm sure that um so, some of my friends would enjoy trying to to do some calculations <laughs> to see yep Stephen West I love um his designs um that's exactly West Knits I think is exactly what I was talking about he's his designs are absolutely stunning. Um, links. Yeah, okay. I will try to remember to add a link um, to that project that I did and to the pattern um, at the end. I forget if it was a free pattern or if it was free at the time or if it's one that I purchased. Um, yeah, if... If I had two of me, then I could like pop links into the chat as I go, but I have to, I can't quite do that as I'm spinning. Yeah, well, I think that you should totally jump in and buy a spinning wheel. It is a lot of fun and I'm so glad that it looks fun. <laughs> um, Oh, speaking of looking fun, I can't see. Okay, that is filming. Um, on one of your suggestions, I am filming this spinning so that way I can do a bit of a time lapse. Um, whoops, that is a thick section. Okay, I have not drafted this enough. <laughs> Am I a designer as well? Uh, yes, yes, I am a designer. Um, I, it's a little, sorry, I'm having some trouble with the uptake now because I got distracted and my yarn changed uh, thickness. Um, I am a designer. I have, most of my designs are available for free. Um, and I have a couple that are for sale on Ravelry. And um, I'm on Ravelry as Chemnitz blog, and you can see a lot of my designs. My most popular designs are now um, the genie hats um, that I designed for the March for Science that have, um, it's a series of hats that either have color work or cable um, DNA chains running up them. And those are all available for free through my website, which is www.chemnitz.com. Um, I have a couple designs that uh, weren't for, you know, a cause or anything that um, I have for sale. But I do like to try to offer most of them for free because uh, I like them to be as accessible as possible. Um, but some of the ones that take a little more, um, with the exception of the genie hat, some of the ones that take a little more effort in the design, uh, I sell. But I think I only have... So there's one set of three patterns and then I think one other, two other individual ones. So maybe I sell five patterns total of like my hundred. Oh, you bought the shawl that I designed a while ago? Oh, I love that shawl. It's so comfy and it also is a good use for hand dyed yarn. I have a video on the channel where I dyed the yarn that I used in the sample. So that was a very um, fun project and I have 
Well, I have a notebook full of designs. It's about getting the time to, <laughs> to, to make the samples and then tech edit. I think the Genie collection, I have never gotten patterns out so fast, but I had some people, because um, I wasn't able to do a full test, and I had people um, tech edit it um, for free on the fly, and so that was really, really awesome of them. Uh, Tomorrow I will be pushing to confirm purchase on my will. You have confirmed it in my mind. I watch time-lapse spinning videos while drinking coffee. Um, yeah, uh, that is pretty cool. Jake, was it you that suggested that I do the, the time-lapse? Um, I can't always see the names as I'm uh, reading, reading the comments. But I like doing, well, it's not really time-lapse because I'll just do... Um, I'll speed up the video, but uh, yeah, because I'm just actually filming, but uh, I think that it should be pretty fun. And guys, almost done with this first fiber. Yeah, um, I, I love doing it. Sometimes I like doing this with the um, some of the dyeing videos as well. I like just watching the dye spread out. It makes me really happy to see it bloom out into the water and then absorb to the fiber. Um, sometimes it doesn't really look like much, so I don't end up including them in the videos, but sometimes it's really cool and a lot of fun. But yep, here is the end. Wahoo! The, we finished the first 100 grams of roving. Yes, this is so purple. Purple is my favorite color and it's kind of nice because it means that the breaking violet stuff that, okay, where, let me get, come around here so I can see. It means that the breaking violet stuff that I like to do is that much more fun. Oh, who are my knitting and spinning inspirations? Gosh, I mean, there are <laughs> a lot. Um, oh, my Atlanta. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, so this is, I like that the way it filled the bobbin is kind of almost like the gradient um, from the roving originally. Um, I am very very excited about this and I think it'll be really fun when we ply it with this fiber and it's hard to tell okay I just need to come around here I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it and so this yarn I speckle dyed um, with oh my goodness where are my other bobbins um, I speckled dyed it with Wh Wilton's Violet, and the color is almost completely separated. Aha. I almost forgot that I had, um, that I was going to need a second bobbin. <laughs> My arm, yep, and where, there we go. Let's see, see how easy <laughs> the changing of the bobbin was. Um, there's other, like I think that in the reviews that I read, the the ease of use is so it was so high for this wheel, which was one reason why I picked it. And I just leave my leader yarns attached and reuse them over and over because getting them tight on the edge back here so that way it doesn't just spin around and around is was it's always a little frustrating so I find it easier to just leave it on oh gypsy mama you dyed some yarn on on Sunday mm -hmm. that's cool um but yeah so this oh, I love that it almost just looks just like it did when I first added the dye where can you get it? Yeah. 
Um, some in some places it almost looks frosted, but um, it's it's so fun that how much the color is separated. And so the reason why uh, the reason why the violet breaks into the magenta and the blue is that the red molecule binds to the yarn much faster. So if you look closely at this. Um, it is a pretty reasonable example of it because you can see the little dots of pink and then the blues are much more spread out. And so as those, they, they take a little longer to absorb to the fiber and so you get these splotches of color. Um, do you have to purchase extra bobbins? Um, I believe that the wheel came, oops. I believe that the wheel came with three, um, which, usually is pretty sufficient um, for a lot of what I do because um, I did get, and I haven't used it yet, I did get a Lazy Kate um, one year for my birthday, uh, which is a device that can hold three bobbins and you can, there's um, metal pegs that you can attach the bobbins to on the bottom of the wheel for plying. So plying is really, really easy. Um, but I haven't used the Lazy Kate yet. And when my husband got me the Lazy Kate, I was like, oh, you know, if I'm going to use that, I would need more bobbins. So he got me a bunch of extra bobbins as well. Um, so now I'm just, I'm separating this lengthwise kind of like I did with the other fiber, um, just for ease of spinning. I could just start drafting it from one end, but I find that it's a little easier to do this. I am so glad that you, I've inspired you guys to dye some yarn. Um, oh, the, somewhat, Jake said, I also asked you the question about Wilton's Violet's food coloring, super solid, oh, super solid dyeing job. Your suggestion for a large vat of water and lots of dye, it worked great. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's funny, because I, I have been able to dye solid purple yarns. But most of the time, people ask to see more breaking. Um, so, and it's just so fun because the, it's just a simple setup and you get such beautiful um, color changes. All right. So I have, oh, this is so like, so magenta. So there is a bit of a difference between the base fiber that I used for these singles that I finished, my on camera, for these singles I finished and this fiber I'm about to spin. Um, the base fiber here that I already spun was full circle roving in color pigeon, which was a pale gray. And the base for the speckled yarn was wool of the Andes bare roving. And it is more of a, well, it's not a pure white, but kind of like a bare undyed white. Um, and I also, I guess, ended up dividing this into five approximately even sections. And I will try to spin it at a similar um, weight. And oh yeah, where is... Uh-oh. Aha! I almost forgot. So I'm going to come around this way. So that way I can actually get it on camera. All right, so this is a WPI tool. Um, and it is something extra that I purchased and it's one of my favorite spinning accessories. What it helps you do is measure the wraps per inch um, of your yarn. So that way you can tell approximately the weight of it. Um, and so, where, all right. So I inserted the fiber into one end and you're really, okay, this is really hard to do with the phone in between. You're supposed to spin the tool versus wrapping the yarn around, but mm -hmm. I'm cheating a bit because, uh, okay, this is a bit thicker than I wanted. I'm cheating a bit because, yeah, it's easier, but look at those colors. And you can also see how it looks even while I'm spinning it, 
but it's not quite that even. Okay, so how many wraps do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 or 15. And so if we look at this um, card, 14 or 15, okay, so it's like about a DK or sport weight um, single. So I'm <laughs> pretty far from achieving lace weight. I mean, I guess I have done stuff approaching lace weight in the past, but I don't think I have on the wheel. And now I am a little tangled because I was trying to do this fast. And so I just saw a question pop up um, on the phone and, okay, since I have to show my mistakes, look at my little tangled mess. It's actually quite beautiful, but, um, all right, I've untangled it. Um, the question was, am I gonna be plying the yarn as well? And the answer is yes. I am, the plan is after I spin this new fiber, I'm gonna ply it with this other fiber. And so combine them together. So we should get these pretty unique longish stripes. And I just made a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> all right, are there any other questions that I missed? Uh, yeah, it, it'll even, um, the comment said that it'll even up when I ply the yarn and it definitely will. Um, it definitely will. And I'm gonna turn this back on. All right. Yeah, it'll, oops, I need to tighten the brake band. And now I'm getting, since I'm spinning in the reverse of the way my leader was applied, I wanna get a bunch of extra twist in there so that way it doesn't unravel um, as soon as I put it in. Have I ever dyed acrylic yarn? I've never dyed 100% acrylic yarn. Um, most of the dyeing that I've done has been food coloring based. Um, and so food coloring based dye won't work on acrylic fibers. Um, but I did start dyeing yarn that was 20% wool, 80% acrylic. Um, oh, that's a really pretty color. And so you can dye acrylic blends, um, but I think that to dye 100% acrylic, you would need different commercial um, dyes. Uh, I started dyeing with food coloring because that's what I had easy access to. Um, I was a grad student living in the city, didn't have a car, and so I could run to the grocery store and get some Kool-Aid. And I was like, hey, this is a lot of fun. And here I am making videos and all that jazz. Um, yeah, and it's it's kind of fun. The, wow, this fiber is, um, it's nice, but it's definitely, this feels, I mean, it's a different fiber, con slightly different fiber content. This is, I think, all Peruvian Highland wool, and the other is a mix with some merino and some other stuff in it. So it does feel different. How did the 2080 turn out? Did it absorb well? Um, yeah, it absorbed, where is the blanket? Um, hold on a sec, let me get the blanket. It absorbed pretty well. Um, if I can find it, I have an afghan here that has, aha. This is my 10 hour afghan. And so not the darkest yarns that you see in here were not ones that I dyed, cause some of them Weren't. But like right here, um, those those lighter ones in this medium pink right here is one that I dyed with Kool-Aid. So you definitely get pastels and you can see it almost ends up looking heathered because you can see that the acrylic fibers didn't take up any, any of the dye. But it's pretty fun. And if you use a lot of dye, you can get um, a bit of a darker color. But I had a lot of fisherman's wool colored in that blend. So I wanted to do something to use up. I forget if I had 10 balls of yarn left and maybe they were 
I don't remember if they were 100 gram or 200 gram balls. I, I had a lot of it, so I needed, I needed to do something. Um, oh, it's my pleasure to show. Um, that blanket is one of my designs. I mean, it's a simple seed stitch, but it is a 10 hour Afghan. I timed myself as I was knitting it on size 50 needles, and I think I held six strands of yarn together at a time of worsted weight yarn. And I was using up a bunch of remnants that I had around the house and I timed it. And from now, I, I mean, I didn't time breaks that I took, but total knitting time was nine hours and something. I don't know. There's a whole log of my progress. Um, <laughs> I feel like the blog is very much like a lab notebook for me. Um, because I was very interested in like trying like in taking I would I was taking notes and I actually set up like some file maker database at first before I started the blog and I was keeping like pretty detailed notes on like everything I did with projects because I wanted to be able to reproduce them <laughs> and you know and so then I started the blog and started sharing that and then well I also now share those things on Ravelry. Um, but yeah, it was, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe some of these notes will help someone. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of where I started. So the fiber and the other yarn felt fluffier. Um, if there's a way that's a way to describe it, but I'm not sure if you can really tell, but they do the, this one that I'm spinning right now with the specs, each of the singles is kind of looking like a little twist and it's really cool. Um, and really, really pretty. Um, this, this speckled technique would probably make a really cool single ply yarn that you were going to knit with directly. It'll also look really awesome plied. But I love getting twisted yarns. Whoa, someone, Gypsy Mama, you use acrylic paint to dye acrylic yarns? How did that turn out? Um, can, like, does it get stiff or can you wash, um, wash it and, yeah, I'm curious about that because, well, gee, maybe that's something I would... I'd have to try myself. That sounds pretty fun. I would like to try other dyes. I would just need to get some other equipment because dyeing with food stays, food grade ingredients is kind of handy. Um, yes, ma'am, it did get stiff. However, it was washable as well and it didn't dissolve too badly. Hey, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, you know, we talk about hand painted yarn, um, but I never thought about literally painting the yarn. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there are definitely dyes out there that you can use for acrylics. And these techniques that I do also don't work well at all on cotton, um, although blends. It works great on silk and it works great on um, nylon blends. I haven't tried, I have some 100% nylon fiber that I want to try to dye at some point um, because people say that nylon will take it up. Excuse me. Uh, but I'd like to test that out myself. Uh, but yeah, so it's 730 and my house is pretty much silent because all the, well, the human boys all went off um, for a beach weekend, and I'm staying behind for kind of like a little mommy crafting retreat, and so I'm going to have like a little vacation away from my parent duties, so I'm pretty excited. Um... I, I don't know what that um, what that 
means. Um, I just see a bunch of letters. Um, yeah, so it's pretty nice to have like some time that I can spin and I'm about, I, right before I came on, I was ironing fabric so that way I can try to work on a quilt top, which will only be my second quilt ever. Um, so I'm a little apprehensive about how it's going to go. Um, but I really enjoyed my first, how my first quilt came out and my eldest has been asking for a quilt. So yeah, I'm going to try to get as much of that done as I can and take advantage of not having to put away everything every night. Um, at least for two nights. So that should be pretty nice. Oh, you're making t-shirt quilts. That, yeah, I have a bunch of t-shirts that I saved of mine and of my husband's that I want to make into a t-shirt quilt. And I have, like, I have the stabilizer and I have some backing and stuff for them. Uh, I just, again, need to find time uh, to do it. And I also have to decide if, like I, if we're, I'm gonna divide our shirts up and give us each a blanket, or if I want to combine our shirts into one, um, because there are nice things about combining it, but we have so many shirts that I don't think that there's enough space, or, or like t-shirts that we want to save. I don't think there's enough space for us to both fit um, on one quilt. Border the shirt designs with quilting fabric so it makes it more stable. Oh, that is interesting. I have like a really thin iron-on stabilizer that I was going to use, try on the back. Um, but I'm going to do like a little bit of a couple tests um, to see. I had like grand plans of doing something beyond squares, but, um, or beyond like identical squares. But we'll We'll see how, um, hopefully for this Christmas, I can make my husband a t-shirt quilt. That would be really nice. Do that too. Yeah. One for you, one for your husband, and one for both of you. That, oh, that could be fun. Um, so we, my husband and I met, um, I, I was a student at Wellesley College and he was at MIT, and we met our senior year, and then we both went to grad school together. And so, yeah, it could be fun to keep the, the college shirts. There's, I have so many Wellesley shirts, um, so it could be nice to keep them separate. But I also, because my mom saves everything, I found shirts in like the rag drawer from when I was in elementary school. And so I rescued some of those to go into my t-shirt quilt. So I was pretty excited. Um, oh, I'd, I'd love to look at the albums of the quilts. Are they all um, t-shirt quilts or do you do other quilts as well? Um, yeah, I should start, I think I need to start a whole other Pinterest board on just t-shirt quilts to figure out exactly what I wanna try to do. Um, so said, I dyed cotton with kids' textile paint, but I didn't like that much. The colors weren't vibrant. Um, ooh, other quilts, too. Sorry, um, multiple conversations. One about the painting yarn with paints, and then the other one about quilting. Um, oh, I love looking at quilts other people do. My aunt is, like, an amazing quilter, um, and she made quilts for both of the boys that are just out of this world. Um, and so I, I just love and I'm so inspired by what other people can create. Uh, for cotton yarns, I have dyed them using commercial tie-dye kits, um, and that works really well to get extremely vibrant um, primary colors, but um, it takes a while, and you don't have as, like, I suppose you could mix them before you apply them just like you mix other dyes, but um, there are 
like some limitations uh, with the colors with that those kinds of dyes. Eek. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is like this is so much fun. Um, I love watching different colors come together um, as I'm spinning. And I swear, I do spin yarn that isn't broken violet. And I do dye things that aren't broken violet as well. But it's just one of my favorite. And it's just such a fun property about that food coloring. Um, and yeah, I like... I also just like that it's, you know, f food coloring for cakes and it has so much m other beauty within it that you can find. Yeah. Yeah, the, I find the quilting is a little more intimidating for me because, you know, I can look, you know, you can get a yarn and you can think of like, oh, a ton of different ideas of what you can make with it. And the same is true with fabrics, but so sometimes it's really hard to find something to mix with. I'm not, I'm not very good with mixing prints. Um, and so that's something that I'm still struggling with uh, a bit. I have a little easier time when it comes to yarn and patterns, I think, because they're, maybe there's just not quite as many choices. I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, see, I got distracted and I didn't move that over. Um, <laughs> but yeah, quilting is just, I've always been in awe of it. And yeah, I can, I can see how people, I have friends whose mothers, um, you know, they covered all the beds in the house. And so then they were making these gorgeous quilts, um, that they hung on the walls and, um, just the. The time and the planning is awesome. But I'm also impressed with the people who, you know, will buy fiber from a whole sheep and then turn that into a sweater. And I, I spoke a little bit the other night about how I do have some hand carters because I thought that I would try blending my own fiber. And all I did was succeed in bleeding <laughs> on the fiber because I successfully carted my skin. <laughs> so, but maybe now that it's been a couple years since I first tried that, I can go back and then watch some more videos and figure out how to do it properly. <laughs> Cause that's kind of what happened with me with spinning and with crochet. I tried once, didn't take, and then I tried again, you know, a year or so later and really liked it. Hello. Thank you for joining. I know it's a it's a Friday night. And so there's there's a lot of stuff going on out there besides, you know, some nice slow TV here on YouTube live. <laughs> I really appreciate y'all joining in. Um, I, I can't remember who, on one of my other live videos, when I was just testing out what, you know, how, how to do it and um, the different platforms and cameras that I had access to, um, someone asked if I would spin live. And so I was like, sure, I'll have to try to figure out how to make the, the time for that to work. Cause well, my, my kids are one and three. And so the three-year-old knows not to play with the wheel. Um, I have let him treadle before and he really likes that. But the one-year-old would probably say car and then try to drive it around the, the kitchen. Which, you know, this is sturdy, but I do not think it could handle that. Get a jumbo bobbin for your plying. Um, 
I wonder... I, I don't know if I can get a, a bigger... Can I get a bigger bobbin for this? Um, uh, I'd, I'd love to get a bigger bobbin if I could. Um, and so if... Um, I looked at one point, and so there's a Jumbo Orthus um, that I use when um, that has like a kind of like a loop that connects right here, and then it has bigger loops for the yarn to feed onto the bobbin. Um, but they do have bigger bobbins. Huh. I will have to look for those because like it pains me when something won't fit on the bobbin anymore and I have to break the yarn on purpose. I just wanted to like make, you know, a thousand yard continuous, <laughs> continuous gain. Um, you need to get a bigger flyer. Oh, so maybe I haven't been able to find it because I've just been looking for bigger bobbins. But if I look for the, the bigger flyer, that's this part that is flying around. Um, Maybe I should try looking and seeing if they have bigger flyers. I'm not, sh I, I mean, I know that that exists for other wheels, but um, I mean, it would make sense that if, that one could work on here um, because it's so compact, that there's definitely um, plenty of space. Well, okay, maybe not plenty because there's not that much space right here, but there's definitely some space for a larger flyer. And that would be so helpful because I find like, I'm just with 100 grams of two ply worsted weight, I'm often just at the limit of what the bobbin can hold. So. Oh, I'm glad it's relaxing to watch me spin. It's very relaxing to do. Um, it's very calming. And yeah, it's, well, the first book, not the first book, but a book that I loved, I, I grew up as a big fan of Tamora Pierce. Um, the author and I share the same birthday and, you know, there's, I named my wheel Sandry after one of her characters whose magic is through like spe spinning and weaving and thread and you know they described the spinning as like a meditation or that they would meditate while spinning and i just think that um as soon as i started i was like i can s the you can really see how someone could write that and i don't even know if the author spins but it's just so rhythmic um huh i've i've bought other of my accessories from the Woolery website. So I will definitely, definitely look and see if I can find jumbo uh, bobbins and flyers for my wheel. If so, you know, those are going on my wish list. Uh, my birthday is usually right in the middle of Hanukkah. So uh, I get a lot of a lot of combo gifts. Um, yeah. Oh, you're watching all night. And, oh, did I bump my sofa? <laughs> ah. I know, I sometimes wish that I could, like, well, sometimes if I'm not spinning, I will sit and just treadle the wheel because the sound is really soothing for me. <laughs> trying to decide between a puppy and a spinning wheel. Huh, is it for space reasons or for um, financial reasons? Or time reasons, I suppose. Puppies take a lot of time. So my wheel is almost five years old and my puppy is um, just over six years old. So... And thankfully, the dog has zero interest in the wheel. He just basically ignores it. Um, and so, and he does not ignore a lot of things, but um, I'm glad the wheel does not bother him. Ah, money. Yes. Um, the, 
Yeah, I can I can see that. Both are both both puppies and spinning wheels are investments. Um, you know, one of them, I guess the the other consideration is one of them you can put in a closet if you need to, and one of them you cannot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's quite a different <laughs> a different choice. Um, but yeah, I yeah when we got the dog, we're like we can't leave for more than you know this number of hours. Uh, but he's a member of our family and our first baby, so it's nice. Oh, your old dog died in July. I am so sorry. Um, I, my current dog, Indy, is my first dog ever. And I mean, my grandparents had dogs and some good friends of mine. Um, before we, ha we got our dog, they got a puppy and they took me to all of the training classes with them, which was really awesome. But... I haven't had a dog die, um, and so thankfully American Eskimos have life expectancies of like 18 years, and Indy's only six, so I'm not going to have to worry about that for a long time. She was 16. That's a really like good long life. I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss, um, but I'm, it's nice that um, the dog got to be around for so long. Um, yeah, I, oh, I, I can't imagine They're like so many, you know, of all these dogs. I still that between my me and my friends, I think of all these dogs as puppies, and then realizing that oh, this one's turning eight this year, and um, they all still seem like the babies that they were. Oh, you have an Eskimo. Um, yeah, Indy is, a uh, well, his parents were miniature American Eskimos, but he is tall, so I think he's probably, like, a standard Eski. Um, he is an amazing family dog. He just dislikes strangers with a passion. Um, and I think that he has some anxiety. Uh over it but he is extremely gentle and you know with with the babies and the kids love him <laughs> uh my one-year-old goes up and goes r r with a um tug toy because we play growl with indy um when we tug and the dog is so gentle with the baby when he's tugging and then really like picks it up with us and it's very nice Yeah, Amer uh, Indy's 25 pounds. Um, a big old fluff ball. I've been saving his fur with the thought of, well, it would be not very nice to make him a sweater out of that because whenever I put him in a sweater, poor guy, he's so hot. Um, <laughs> so we, we usually, if he's wearing a sweater, it's just very briefly for photos. Um, but... Yeah, I think that his fur is so soft, I kind of want, like, to make mittens or something for myself out of it. And at first, okay, so when at first I thought about this, I was like, oh, gee, is it kind of weird to save, like, dog fur to, like, try to make yarn out of it? But then I realized, like, what am I spinning right now? It's sheep fur, right? So that made it less strange. But I have bags and bags saved of like his brush his post bath brushings uh. oh i've never had a cat um i'm i'm allergic and you know i have an acquaintance who fosters um kittens and watching it just makes ugh. They're so delightful, but I know that we can never have a cat because we value breathing. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I did grow up with guinea pigs because my family had allergies. Um, and yeah, but I miss, I, I like, I like them a lot. Um, yeah, it's so pretty. Um, I love the way, um, they spin up. Oh, I would, okay, so the comment is, I think that you would treasure a dog fur sweater. I, I don't think that I have nearly enough fur to make an adult-sized dog fur sweater. Um, I think that, and with the esky fur, it would be a very warm sweater. Um, so that's why I'm leaning more towards mittens or something where, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't weighed it, but the, the problem is that the, his, even though he's a really fluffy dog, the staple length of the fur is only a couple inches. And so I don't have the ability to spin that myself. Um, there are websites where you can, or companies that you can take your pet's fur and they will spin it um, for you or even knit a little accessory. Um, Oh, you had guinea pigs when you were 10? I think, yeah, I was 10 when I got my first guinea pig. We found her at the Humane Society, or by we, I mean my parents did, and they got her as a surprise for me. Um, <laughs> and we had her for eight years, I think. Um, yeah, she and she outlasted. We had some other guinea pigs we got from pet stores, but none of them lived nearly as long as Flower. Um, she was black and white, and so I named her after the skunk and Bambi. Oh, that would be so cool, Holly, to make, um, to spin your Border Collie's fur and make a hat for your son. Um, Border Collies are beautiful dogs. Is there, how long is their fur? Um, or does it, is there variation within the breed? What's my most loved fiber to spin? And you know, I should have foreseen this and looked up the pronunciation. Um, it's the blue-faced Lester, I think someone said. B it's frequently called BFL. Um, and I need to restart the secondary camera. Um, but that is one of my favorite fibers to spin. I also really enjoy spinning silk hankies. Um, they don't have a lot of give, but the silk is so shiny and pretty. That's how you say it, Blueface Lester? Okay. Um, oh, your English is looking totally fine. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, my, well, we all have story. I'm sure everyone has stories when you read words and then um, pronounce it wrong in your head for years and then you say it out loud and then people giggle. I think that in high school I was reading a book and I was like, oh, there's this girl named Trickia. And my friends looked and I, we were t I was like, oh yeah, well, Trickia. And my friends look at me, they're like, you mean Trisha? And I was like, oh. <laughs> so that, that was the last week. Oh, you didn't spell anything wrong. Um, you didn't spell anything wrong. Um, no, I, I was just trying to um, think about how, I was just talking all about me and how I didn't know how to, wasn't sure how to pronounce the, my favorite uh, fiber to spin and how I got asked this question last night and I should have looked it up and double checked in the meantime. Um, And English is my first language, and I miss I misspell stuff very <laughs> frequently. Uh, autocorrect doesn't always uh, help me. 
Um, sometimes I'm way too far, far off. But ooh, I'm really enjoying that uh, the difference between uh, these fibers, which, okay, on my screen, you, it's a little overexposed, so you can't see as well. I'll give a close up um, in a little bit. But yeah, they, oh, wow. I think that I've finished most of this second one so far. So I think that um, I'll, I'll finish up this roving and then in the next video we'll ply. Woohoo! Yeah. I've never been to Germany. Uh, I've done very little travel over in Europe, um, which is a shame because my brother and sister-in-law live in, um, my, my husband's brother and his wife, they live in London and they come here to visit us more than we go over there. Your late husband said ca Capri corn <laughs> instead of Capricorn. That's really cute. Wow. Living 20 minutes to the beach. Oh, that sounds delightful. Okay. Oh, I guess I suppose I probably am within 20 minutes or maybe a little over of a, of a beach in Boston, but, um, yeah, I think that, so my, my husband and kids went to the beach this weekend and they went to Cape Cod and I think that's about an hour and a half drive. So not bad. Um, but Keith kept telling me I should go away for a weekend because he has to travel a lot for work and he's done some trips to visit some friends. And most of my good friends have kids and so, you know, trying to do a getaway with them would be hard to schedule at this point because some of the, a lot of the kids are still so young. And I realized that what I really wanted was a weekend at home. And so I now have time to get a lot of crafting and stuff done. But yeah, in September, the baby is going to start school and I don't know how I'm going to keep it together, but I'll start to have some time to get things done again. So I should, uh, I imagine that this fall and into next year, the, I will start being able to make a lot more videos again. And so I am really excited about having like some chunks of time to do that. Well, 20, so I, uh, the comment is that the summer isn't very beach friendly, just 20 to 25 degrees. And I know that that would be Celsius. Um, and so it's not very hot weather, but I think 25 degrees, which is about room temperature, right? Um, I think that would be 75 and 75 Fahrenheit. That's one of my ideal, um, ah, well, maybe I can do, uh, See, as I'm shifting this. Um, there's a comment about wanting to see more of my drafting technique and less of the, the spooling. And so I'll try to shift the camera so that way I can make that happen. Yeah, last, in part two of the series, I was pulled back more so you could see, but uh, you couldn't see. I wanted to try to bring it closer. Um, but Tisha, thank you for that comment. And hopefully... Um, well, it's, so I'm not, I'm filming on my phone and I am not filming in selfie mode. So, okay. Now you can see both my hands. I'm not filming on selfie mode. So you can't, so I can't see, I have to look on the computer, um, to see where the camera is pointing and there's a tiny bit of a delay. So that's why sometimes I struggle to get things on camera. Uh, -uh. 
Yes. Well, I know 20 Fahrenheit would be icy. I was just clarifying um, that, that it was Celsius for whomever is listening. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think. Yeah, the, so I, since there was the comment about my, my drafting, I don't do a long draft. Um, I've never really seemed to figure out how to make that work without getting like a really uneven uh, twist. So I do this kind of short draft um, that... That works for me, but I think, so I determined earlier tonight that I think that these singles are probably between a DK and sport weight. So thinner than some of the chunkier yarns I'd been doing recently, but um, in the next project, which I don't know if I, I'll do on film or not, um, but one of my next spinning projects after this, I think I'm going to try to go for um, actually being really, really thin. Um, but because I think that this um, weight tends to be like my sweet spot comfort zone. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad that you like the color of the roving. Yeah, this. Um, this is one of the broken violet fibers that I've done. And I, the roving, the video of me dyeing the roving is on the channel. Um, as well, and I will add it to the description of this video and in a comment on this video after um, I am done being live. And the, what was I going to say? The, the questions, unfortunately, from the live chat won't, um, aren't saved after the fact for some reason, which is kind of sad. Um, because I can't even find them after the fact. Uh, but, you know, we, I will try to respond to some of the questions with, um, that were brought up with some links, um, at the end. Yeah, I, Tisha, thank you for, for that comment. Um, I'm happy to try to, to like give you guys what you want to see right um yeah i want i might next time well see it's hard because i i on principle i don't want to film in portrait mode um and so but i'd have to back up pretty far to get uh for the plying so you could see Maybe, maybe I'll try to like rig this up in a slightly different view for when I ply um, the fibers. I can't believe, I can't believe I'm almost done. This is all that's left. So spinning this, like, so I would describe these fibers as stickier and I'm not sure if it's because of, you know, the, like maybe if it got, potentially got slightly felted when I was dying or what, but, um, or just the different fiber content. Um, but the, the yarn that I'm getting feels like really smooth. Um, oh, good night. Thanks for hanging out. And I cannot believe that, you know, you're up at 2am hanging out with me, uh, <laughs> as I'm spinning. I really appreciate it. When I'm, yeah, um, you mean that the fact that the twist doesn't get up in this section? I keep, when I move my hand, it, I try to keep my fingers pinched. Um, and yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of, you know, one of the things with being like self-taught is just kind of like, trying and oh I should have let a little more twist come in here oh stop that and I will try to tilt this back because we filled 
our second bobbin. Yay! That was really fast. Um, maybe about the same rate as the other one. And I'm not going to check the WPI quite yet, but um, I do not think I got as much yardage out of this other one. If you look at the bobbins, this this one looks less full. Um, the one that I just finished, I think that the I think that the fiber was a bit denser. This one felt fluffier as I was doing it. Um, but I mean, the coloration right now looks pretty similar. But I'm gonna kind of move this and move the camera so that way I can have a little more control. Hopefully my plug goes far enough. Okay. So this way I can have a little more control over showing you. So this is the singles that I did first that I finished off tonight. And this roving I had crochet chained and then dip dyed into a vat of Wilton's Dilet. Wilton's Dilet. Wilton's Violet food coloring, um, which gave kind of a you know, mostly pink sections and mostly blue sections with some variation in them when I undid it. And then the fiber that I just finished right now, I had speckle dyed with roving, with roving. Wow, guys, I am sorry. I am misspeaking left and right. This one I had speckle dyed um, with Wilton's Violet food coloring. And so we had these little dots of color. And so it's a little hard to see, but there's a lot more twist within the, the strand, within the colors itself. Um, but they're both very beautiful and have similar tones. And I really can't wait to ply them together and see how it comes out. I'm not quite sure when I will do the plying, um, but... Certainly, um, yeah, I'm not, I, I think it depends on how the rest of the weekend is going, but I will, you know, if I have advance notice, I will try to let you guys know on Instagram and Facebook when I will be going live again um, to do the plying, but probably either Sunday or Monday. Um, but I really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me as I was working on this spinning project. Um, it's nice, well, it's nice for me to see so much progress on something um, in so short of time. You guys have really motivated me to keep at it. Um, and yeah, okay, here I am. <laughs> yeah, so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um, I really appreciate you know, the support and the questions and I'll try to get better at reading um, the comments that are questions out loud. Um, and I'm sorry if I missed anything. Um, oh, a question. Do you have to let the plies rest before you ply them? Um, I don't always let them rest very much. After I ply the yarn, I then wind it onto a nitty knotty and then I wet it with um, hot water or warm water and I'll let that dry to set the twist but I don't sometimes I will ply immediately after the singles are done but then like tonight I'm gonna not ply right now so they will rest in between um but maybe a more expert spinner would have a better answer <laughs> um as to why but for me it's really just based on timing and what I have time for and yeah um, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and my website is www.chemnitz.com. Um, if you want to be updated with, um, you know, when I go live, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel because I think that then you'll get like a notification anytime I go live. Um, but I will also always post the link on the Chemnitz Facebook page, um, which is just under Chemnitz. Um, and then frequently I'll also post like a graphic on Instagram, but since you can't really add links on Instagram, um, Facebook is, um, probably the best place to look for a live link, but I do try to give a little bit of heads up sometimes, unless it's just like a, 
hey, surprise, here I am. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you so much for watching and spending your Friday night with me. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I will let you all know when I will be back. Um, oh, when you say crochet chain before you die, do you mean with the roving or did you spin the, it crochet and then dye it? Oh, I, I kind of put the roving in a crochet chain like braid. So it's very short with like a few stitches and it's um, a way I frequently store fiber. Um, and so dyeing, yeah, dyeing that crochet chain was just um, the roving kind of twisted up. Um, and that video is on the channel and I'll add a link to that um, momentarily on this video. So are there any other questions? If you have other questions, you can add it to the video after, after the fact. I should, um, once it's no longer in this live section, I should still, those comments should then be permanent. But yeah. Thank you guys. Good night.